Top ranked Ohio State has not been able to escape the injury bug. Wide receiver Corey Smith lost for the season after breaking his leg in the win at Indiana. And earlier this week, defensive back Cam Burrows underwent season ending foot surgery, putting more pressure on the Silver Bullet starters. But as Mark reports, the OSU secondary enjoying that heat. After giving up 169 yards on the ground to Western Michigan, and with the Big Ten's leading rusher Jordan Howard waiting at Indiana, Buckeyes tweaked the defense last week, relying heavily on junior safety Von Bell. We knew we had to stop the run and, and insert some guys in the box from things that happened the week before, which means sometimes that, that means Von's going to be on his own in, in a lot of situations. Yeah. And um, you know, we didn't lose any sleepover because we know that Von took the challenge and, and was up to the challenge and was going to do a great job. Yeah, I did. Uh, certainly, uh, I asked for it with Coach Ash. I told him, put me on the island. I'll get the job done for you. So that's what I did for these guys. He's one of the most valuable players on our team just from what we ask him to do, playing out there in space. Uh, the Sam, we asked the Sam to get in some fits, and Vaughn is out there on an island sometimes mm -hmm. playing off man. Um, it's arguably the toughest position on our defense. So what he's doing is just unbelievable. It's, it's priceless. You can't even put a number on it, how, yeah. how great he's been playing. So he's been playing really well. And Bell came up with a big play when his team needed it the most, clinging to a seven-point lead in the final seconds. I just expect it. Uh, those guys look for those plays for me like that. So yeah. I just want to make those big plays for the guys and this coaching staff and Buckeye Nation. He threw that ball right on the dime right at the end of the game. And uh, Von Bell knocked it out right on the dime. And uh, so Von, Von's playing a very, to answer your question, playing a very, very high level. I know they had two routes. Uh, they were running on the safety right there. Me and Coach has been talking about it all week. And uh, my message to him was they're not going to catch the ball on me. And just sit back up there in the box and relax. And that's what I did. So it was just all hats off to him and watching film with him. So, and I just made the play at the end for him. Has lack of confidence always been a problem for you? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so perhaps Everett Withers' lasting contribution to Ohio State will be the recruitment of Von Bell as the uh, junior safety has certainly proved his worth. And, and that was really one of the interesting recruiting stories for a couple years ago is how <laughs> Everett Weathers went down to, to Georgia and really mm -hmm. pulled Von Bell out of the SEC country. As Mike Miller from WIMA 1150, our Buckeye Insider, joins us now as Ohio State set to take on the 2-3 and three Maryland Terrapins who, well, they, they beat Richmond in South Florida. They lost to Bowling Green. They've lost to West Virginia. They've lost to Michigan. And it's an offense that is very much struggling. Their starting quarterback against the Falcons is, was Perry Hills. All right. Not only is he no longer the starting quarterback, he's not even the second string quarterback. Caleb Rowe started the last couple of games. He got pulled in the Michigan debacle for Dax Garman. Neither one of them played particularly well against Michigan. And earlier this week, Maryland head coach Randy Edsel said, I don't know who my quarterback's going to be on Saturday. I'm not sure that makes it that much more difficult, Mark, for the Buckeyes to prepare uh, for Maryland. Theoretically, it does, but it might be more of a case of just examining what their system has been, what they've been able to do to this point, and for what it's worth, maybe take a look at all three quarterbacks uh, to size up the Terps because the, the Terps haven't left a whole lot on the table. Probably the extent of their success, though, has been offensively, so uh, the work and the onus is on the Ohio State defense. Defense, but I'm not that concerned. Caleb Rowe's gotten the majority of the snaps. He has 12 interceptions, three of which came against Michigan. So certainly this is a chance for the Ohio State defense to get back in that turnover yep. column after they didn't force any turnovers against Indiana. And a big part of that Saturday is going to be pressure up front. Uh, pr when you're dealing with quarterbacks that have struggled, you need to hurry them. And I think Ohio State is prepared to break out with guys like Bosa. And Adolphus Washington has been pretty consistent. Tyquan Lewis showed us last week at Indiana just how good he can be. I think the defense is ready to get that necessary push up front. And we know how good the back seven is. So uh, uh, maybe the turnover script will be flipped this week and it'll be Ohio State on the plus side. Well, against Indiana, Ohio State had 11 tackles for loss. Joey yeah. Bosa, two and a half. Tyquan Lewis, three mm -hmm. and a half. So they did a good job against Indiana getting that pressure, sacking the quarterback, and also tackling running backs behind the line of scrimmage. Really good job by the defensive line at the point of attack yep. against the Hoosiers there. Now, perhaps the one thing Maryland can hang their hat on is William Likely, the cornerback oh, yeah. and their punt returner, kick returner. They're fourth in the nation in punt return yardage. Likely already has returned two punts for touchdowns. 
So Ohio State special teams has to keep an eye on William Likely. Well, sometimes you find these guys. I think Jalen Marshall is a lot like William Likely. They got a knack for finding seams, and after they get the ball, they're heading straight up field. They're not dawdling around trying to make an opening. They're creating openings. Likely has mastered that art, and he's been effective for a few years, so he definitely has the big play capability. I think it's going to be fun to watch him match up with the Ohio State special teams that have been particularly good. Outside of the Woody Hayes Athletic Center, a lot of chatter this week, renewed chatter about the JT Barrett, Cardell Jones quarterback situation. You look at the numbers last year against Indiana. JT Barrett and Cardell Jones performed very similar against the Hoosiers. They both got victories. I think JT Barrett ended up with a little bit more passing yards, but that's really because he had a couple of those flip passes to Jalen Marshall on the jet sweeps that count as passes, but it really yep. runs. But really, those calling for JT Barrett maybe have some selective memory as to what how that Ohio State offense struggled at times, even last year, yep. particularly against the better teams, and how really Cardell Jones provided a burst in the postseason that was lacking the second half of the year. Hey, I love JT Barrett. I love what he did for the Buckeyes last year, and I'm really pleased that he's in the bullpen to come out should something happen to Cardale or should Cardale just suddenly become totally uh, ineffective. But beyond that, I frankly think people need to relax about the quarterback situation that's been settled. The staff has chosen their guy. It is Cardale Jones, and I think we are seeing improvement with the offense. It's all about taking that final step, eliminating turnovers, hitting some more passes that are open. Uh, I think the Buckeye offense is very close, and I look for a breakout Saturday. All right, thank you very much, Mike. Saturday will be homecoming for Ohio State, and also the stadium at Cake Day, which I think yeah. the winning streak on stadium cake is like 26, 27 <laughs> straight good. years they've won on stadium cake day. So <laughs> something to, to look forward to if you're in Columbus tomorrow for the Buckeyes <laughs> and Terrapins. Andy, back to you.